What's up everybody? Welcome back. I'm James and you're watching Blue Dog Aquatics. What's up everybody? Remember last week I told you that we were going to show you how to build these custom tanks here uh, for Aquashella. Now if you look over here, uh, they're 10 gallon rimless and what we're going to do is we're going to put dividers in them so that I don't have to bring down 40 individual tanks that take up so much room. And so what we're going to split them in half with pieces plastic here. Now this is a hard plastic. Um, I actually use this for my lids because glass is very expensive. And so what we're doing is we cut it down to size. We didn't run the saw on camera. I don't like when people do that because the saw is so loud and uh, if you got your speakers all the way up, man it can be deafening. And so we cut this down to size already so that it'll fit. And it'll fit in here something like this. So that way it's right in the middle. Now a little about when you're using your saw um, you want to turn around the blade when you're cutting stuff like that because otherwise it'll dull off the blade the blade's not used to and of course unless you got like a diamond blade or something like that which will eat through anything but most saw blades are not used for plastics and stuff like that so it'll actually dull off the blade so what you want to do is take it off and put it on backwards and that'll keep your blade from getting dull and then whenever you're ready to cut wood again then uh, you can flip it back around and it'll be good to go. Now some of the things that we have here is uh, we have the Aqualand Aquarium safe sealant. Uh, it is going to be around the shrimp so we want to make sure that it's fish safe. And then uh, we have a pair of gloves here uh, just to make sure. I know some people have kind of sensitive hands so we want to make sure that and this stuff can be kind of potent. So when you're using this stuff in an enclosed area, make sure that you have ventilation. We actually have our exhaust fan going on right now uh, just to keep the fumes out of here. But this, when we uh, smear the uh, sealant around the tank uh, to keep the inside piece or the divider in, um, it'll be better to use gloves. That way I can just take them off and dispose of them. Uh, we already have our cock gun. So this tube's about empty. So what we'll use We'll use the last of it and then uh, we'll move on to another tube. So let's get into it. So I'm gonna, before I even start, I'm gonna put some gloves on. It's crazy how expensive gloves are these days uh, with COVID and all that. Everybody bought them out. It used to be like six bucks a box, now it's like 25 bucks a box. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, just dividing the shrimp. Uh, what we'll do is we'll put a bead along the bottom of the tank. And I know this is hard for you guys to see because the camera is up there, but trust me, I'll show you here in a minute. And uh, so what we're doing now is we're running a bead up the sidewall. Now these pieces don't go all the way to the top because, well, they're going to a show. And so they don't have to go all the way to the top. Of course, now the ceiling wants to mess with me. So there's a good standpoint right now. We just have a bead going around. It's not perfect. So what we'll do is we'll set the divider directly on the sealant that we put on the bottom. Uh, and I think this tube's almost gone. So I'll take my finger. It's kind of like resealing an aquarium. Um, it's the same concept, but except for this time, it doesn't have to be watertight. Uh, like I said, we're going to do Neos with Neos and uh, Cardini with Cardinia. Uh, unfortunately, my bat, my Baba buoys won't be coming on this trip, but hopefully at future shows they will be. But the reason why it, it doesn't have to be watertight is because with Neos and Neos, they have very similar water. 
Um, just the main purpose is to make sure that the uh, shrimp don't get through. So what we're gonna do, we're out of seal it, so we're gonna open up a new tube. So I don't care if it's, whoop, I went flying. No, tip. Shove the little poker through. Put that away. Put the tube back in. And we're good to roll again. So, we put the seal up there. Now we're going to run a bead along the side of the, well, the bottom. This is very easy to do. Uh, it's not that expensive. Uh, this stuff, this plastic for a 4x8 sheet is like 15 bucks, which is very reasonable. Especially nowadays with how the price of lumber and everything, the price of materials. You may be asking why I'm using my finger rather than the gun. Well, I can maneuver my finger a lot better than I can the gun. Now I am, I have a hole down here, so I am going to fill it in. Shallot, so these will have plenty of time to cure and they'll turn out something like that. Now stay tuned, we're not going anywhere with this video. Uh, we're still going to show you guys how we are uh, packaging up all the shrimp for the journey down to Florida and uh, hope you like it. Stay tuned. Now we're in the trailer. Sorry if it echoes a little bit. We got a little bit of a, we got a mic on there, so hopefully that helps out. But as anybody knows, being in the trailer, it's gonna echo your voice. But so I want to show you what we got. Uh, right here is a 330 gallon IVC tote. Uh, we pressure washed it out, make sure it was nice and clean. We're actually gonna be transporting RO water down to Aquashella. I know, didn't think about it. They offered to purchase water but i was like oh no i won't need that much water i can just bring like a couple buckets i'll be good no i need about 180 gallons plus excess for show tanks and stuff like that so we wanted to, we just like ah screw it we'll just do it this way now i want to a big thing about having this tank here this tank empty is oh it's 330 times eight gallons you know it's that's a whole lot of weight and the big thing with water is water moves so when you're pulling it down the road you want to make sure that it's properly properly secured we have it two different places we have it anchored on each side up top and then we have it anchored down below at the very bottom that way it keeps it stuck up to the wall now the tanks are all going right here and how we're going to do that is a couple of things a, we're going to take the first piece of foam here, and what it's going to do is barricade off everything in the front. Now, I did forget what we have up here. So, what we have up here are buckets of substrate that are coming down with us to do a, a small layer for the show tanks. Uh, we have a couple of decoration rocks, so stay tuned for that video. Over here, we have uh, five gallon jugs. They're empty right now, and uh, Actually, so is this because we're going to fill it up here in a little bit. Uh, we want to make sure that we have everything in place before we add all that weight. But we brought the buckets uh, because we don't know if we're going to be able to pump straight in or if we're going to have to carry water. And so we brought uh, there's six or eight of them back there just in case. But so back to this, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece. It doesn't even have to be perfect. But you got your razor blade, 
make sure I don't cut off my uh, my hand. Like I said, it doesn't have to be a perfect cut because no one is going to see this. So we got an extra piece right there. Now you may ask why we're putting that there. Well, because the, the tanks are gonna be on the ground, um, most of the time when you transport tanks, they're gonna be up on a pallet, they're gonna be wrapped up. Well, guess what? I don't have access to a pallet jack or a forklift or anything like that. So I have to do the next best thing and make sure that my tanks are moving across country in the safest form possible because there would be nothing worse than getting down there and having several broke tanks. Now, I will say that when you go to a show or uh, an event or maybe it's local or something like that you always want to make sure that you wrap and protect your aquariums um, we made a couple extra just in case i mean god forbid that one of the tanks breaks along the way you know we have spares just to back it up now what we're going to do next uh, get rid of that one piece is we're going to take the next piece and what we're going to do with this I might have to move a couple of tanks is quite simple it's gonna go down on the floor just like that and what that does is that protects this is a wood floor and so what that does is that protects the tanks from the bouncing of the trailer even though this is a double axle trailer it's got air brakes and everything like that and it's gonna have the weight of the water to help stabilize the trailer even more there's still a case of it bumping so what you want to do with that is lay down this is just half inch it's a four by eight residential insulation foam i chose this to do this on the worst possible day because it's like 94 degrees outside so it's like 100 degrees inside the trailer so we're sweating a little bit now what we're going to do now we, we have this little gap but we're going to see if we need all that room uh, for the aquariums. Uh, we still have to put some shelving and stuff like that in here But what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna put a little kicker the full length up against the wall That way the tanks are protected up against the wall. So Like I said Does not have to be perfect I know some people are OCD about this and I'm not I want to make sure that the tank does its job or the insulation does its job so what we're going to do with this uh, look at that that one wants to fight back is quite simple it's just going to sit there so it's protecting the tanks from the wall now what we're going to do next we're going to take one of the aquariums i need to scoot that up because that one There we go. And you may be thinking, this is overkill. There is no way there is, is this necessary for this much stuff for an aquarium. But you gotta remember, I am driving 22 and a half hours to, down to Orlando. So I gotta take every precaution because if something goes wrong, I'm a long ways from home to fix it. So we got a bubble wrap here. So all we're gonna do, Sure, turn this around so it's the right way. We're gonna slide a tank right up in there. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate and wrap all the way around. This is just cushion bubble tape. Again, just to protect the glass. So, there's already a bubble left there. But, I'm over cautious on this. So, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna wrap it around. We don't need it any up against the wall. Don't need tape or anything like that. 
Grab your next tank. Set it down. We're bringing 20 tanks. <coughs> so, we're going to make sure there's plenty of room. Make sure there's plenty of safety with it. A lot of bubble wrap. I'm popping it. So, this will be the last tank of this row. And there we have it. There are four tanks. We'll lay down this extra piece on this side. Uh, that way we have plenty of area and everything like that. Um, we're gonna jump to the end of this because I don't think you wanna watch me wrap 20 tanks. But uh, hang on and we'll be right back. All right guys, as you can see, we finished all 20 tanks. Got them all wrapped up. Now, there was a gap over here, so what we did is we took some empty boxes that have styrofoam in them and we use them as a buffer, make it tight so these tanks don't move. Now, I know you may ask, well, what are you gonna do for keeping them moving back? Well, this blanket's gonna get draped over the edge. We're gonna have uh, one of these racks here right behind it, and we're gonna strap it down so that these tanks don't move from anywhere. These are our other uh, straps. Now, these are heavy, heavy, heavy. Each box is about 200 pounds, so we have it cross angled and hatched and just sunk in there so it will not move but we're getting ready to start uh bagging up fish um they're actually going to get uh transported in one of these boxes here uh not these particular ones i have other ones uh but they're going to get put inside the pickup that way i can temperature control because man it is like a hundred and some odd degrees in this trailer and i don't want my fish baking um so we'll get them all packaged up stay tuned we will show you video of that but it won't be on this video it'll be and we won't have a video until after aquashella because we'll be down there we might do a quick a quick short video of when we first get there so we can upload that um but this will be uploaded uh today and then uh we'll get everything for as far as the uh, fish getting bagged and the journey down there and then us showing up at Aquashella and much, much more. So stay tuned for that. Uh, if you like what you're seeing, make sure to like and subscribe down below. Drop a comment if you like what we did here. If you have any suggestions, hey, I'm always up for suggestions on ways to travel better. Um, but also check us out at Facebook at Blue Dog Aquatics, uh, as well as our Instagram. We also have a Teespring at www, or I'm sorry, it's apparel at uh, bluedogaquatics.org. We'll make sure to drop the link down below. And that has all of our merchandise, uh, all of our fancy shirts and everything like that. So stay tuned for those. Uh, we're actually gonna bring some down to Aquashella. So if you're there, drop by our booth, say hi. Uh, we'll also have uh, our fancy guppies and everything like that. They'll be one of our add-ons. And then uh, we got a couple more surprises in store for you. So stay tuned for that. As always, if you want shrimp, uh, we ship Monday through Wednesday. And uh, the website is www.bluedogaquatics.org. As always, thank you for watching and subscribing. Um, stay tuned. We are so excited for this trip down to Aquashella, and we want to share that journey with you. And as always, the big question, your tank or mine?